And so, in conclusion, young ladies, let me again remind you there's a psychological reason behind every crime. Now, once we have that reason, we have the motive. And once we have the motive, the finding and apprehension of the criminal is merely a matter of police routine. And as for murders, we find that the greater percentage result from the psychological reactions to frustrated ambitions, jealousy, and hate. I thank you. Young ladies. Young ladies, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Danfield. This field college is honored by your presence. The honor is all mine, Dean Chase. Now I believe Miss Fairfax and I will run along. Oh, uh, ready, Rusty? Right with you, Dan. Uh, uh, goodbye, Dr. Danfield. Goodbye, Dean Chase. Now, yeah, how did you like my lecture, Rusty? Well, I... Uh... Can I have you on a grab, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. Here, let me have your book. Yeah. There you are. I asked you, Rusty, how was my lecture? Those girls, they make me so mad. Why? What do they do? What? Well, they didn't hear a word you said. What makes you think that? Well, they were too busy watching that cute way you raise your eyebrows when you talk. Well, then, how did you like my lecture? Well, I... You know, Dan, you do look like Michael Dunn. <laughs> Dr. Danfield, student of crime psychology, has many times provided the police with a solution to a baffling crime. There's an interesting case ahead for the doctor today. We'll call it the case of the little meteorite who wanted to be a star. Well, I'm disappointed in you, Rusty. You, of all people, not listening to my lecture. Oh, I, I've heard it before. Mm. Still snowing on? What a hotel. My room doesn't even have running water. Of course not. Neither is mine. Rusty, is it still snowing? Just as hard as ever. Well, I guess that's it. If this keeps up, we won't get out of this town for a couple of days. Well, at least not tonight. Oh, what do they do on a snowy night in <laughs> Elmhurst? Oh, what do they I've do? I've got a couple of good ideas. Mm -hmm. What, for instance? Well, uh, there must be a theater in this town. Oh, yes, there is. I noticed it this afternoon. Tonight they're playing Vaudeville. Vaudeville? <laughs> I thought Vaudeville was dead. Yeah, it is. Believe me, this is just some way resurrected. <laughs> so you think you know all about music, do you, Tiny? Sure, Slim, I know all about music. Okay, then, what is a scale? A scale? Yes, a scale. What is a scale? A freckle on a fish. <laughs> No, no. Oh, brother, is this corny? Cool? Rusty, this is the feature act. Slim Miles and Tiny Quaid now. Listen. The scale is a system of notes running from C to C. Well, doesn't a fish run from C to C? <laughs> Forget about the fish, Tiny. A scale starts with dough. Oh, money. <laughs> no, not money. Not money? Of course not. Dough is the first note of the scale. Now, after dough comes raised. Oh, raised after the money. <laughs> <laughs> raised not after the money. Then she is it the same way that I know. <laughs> no, no, Tiny. Those raised fellows are stopping at our hotel, Dan. Oh, yeah? The They're moving the just across the hall from mine. Now, after Ray comes me. I thought so. Raised after the money, and you're after Ray. <laughs> Let's take an alibi. I ain't a 
Good stuff. You clear down to Boston. Oh, yeah? Hey, another bow. <laughs> Won't you ever learn to wait for laughs? Me wait? Why, you jumped all over. Oh, hiya, Peter. Oh. Hi, Tiny. See, your voice was swell tonight. Oh, I was okay, but trim here. Brother, what a lousy straight... Why, are you silly-looking fat ape. I can find a better comic than you down at the zoo. Boys, boys, what do you want to do? Break up good act? Oh, uh, nuts. I'm going to change. Yeah, me too. Well, I got a song to sing. See you after time. Yeah, see you after. Brother, if it wasn't for peaches, I'd quit the act right now. I may do it anyway. Well, that's another thing. That peaches thing. Why, she's a trouble... I'm warning you. Don't you say anything about Why, that little bum, she's the reason for all of us. Ah, shut up. If it wasn't for her, we... Shut up. Don't you tell me to shut up, you little scurvy. You slap me. Next time, I'll knock your teeth out. One of these days, I'm going to kill you for that. In a moment, we'll return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... Now back to Michael Dunn for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Ah, what a show that was. No wonder Vaudeville's dead. Those are the kind of guys who killed it. <laughs> oh, they weren't so bad. The tall one's kind of cute. Yeah, I guess they'd be all right if they had some decent material. Well, the picture wasn't bad, so the evening wasn't entirely wasted anyway. <sighs> Would it ever stop snowing? I guess not. Well, here's the hotel. And what a hotel. Must have been built before this country had Indians. Well, at least it's a roof over our heads. These gas lights really get me. Hmm? Oh, Dan, that was screaming. You say the cutest things, Rusty. No. Come on, it came from upstairs. Sounds like our landlady, Mrs. Maine. Yeah, she's got a voice like an air raid alarm, too. Come on in here, Rusty. Mrs. Maine, what is it? What's the matter? I'm so glad you're here. Oh, this is terrible, terrible, terrible. What is? No. Dan on the bed. Oh. Yes, yes, I see. Our little vaudeville friend. The fat one. And he's as cold and stiff as an iceberg. Oh. Oh, stop it, Mrs. Maine. Try and get a hold of yourself. Dan, I, I need a cigarette. Rusty, don't light it. This room is full of gas. <laughs> yes, he's dead, all right. Asphyxiated. There must be a leak in the light fixture. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. The poor man. Poor man. Oh, Mrs. Maine, how did you discover this? I was coming up to deliver this telegram. All the actors stopped here. I thought it might be important. A telegram? For Tiny here? Well, it was for the both of them. Actors always get telegrams. Oh, poor, poor man. Mrs. Maine. Mrs. Maine, please. Coming down the hall, I smell the gas. Actors are such nice people. I knock on the door. There wasn't any answer, so I opened the door, and it comes in, and there he was, just as stiff and cold as an iceberg. Oh, uh, tell me, Mrs. Maine, the tiny's partner, Slim, uh, oh. Slim Miles, is he around? Oh, wonderful man, a fine actor. I saw him down to Calvin, and he gave me a ticket. I know, but have you seen him tonight? Oh. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh, yes, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I know my own when I see it. There's his. A wonderful man seems to be staggering in. Yeah. Uh, oh, hello, folks. Uh, this here friend of yours? I picked him up for being drunk in the short time. Oh. Uh, bring him right in, will you, officer? Okay, okay. Yep. <laughs> oh, you know, with his load... That makes two loads you carry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. jokes. Now, don't anybody light a match. Uh, uh, you, uh... You ain't his partner, young fella. I know you ain't. I seen him down to Calvin. Well, he'd give me a ticket. No, no, no. His partner is over there. Oh, oh, sleep. Eh? No, dead. <laughs> what? What's that? Who's dead? Tiny is, Slim. Can't do this to me. Tiny can't do this to me. I'm afraid it's already been done. Slim, uh, there's a telegram for you. I wish you'd please open it. Telegram? Uh, give it to him, will you, Mrs. Maine? Here. From, from our agent. It's got an opening for us in Hollywood. In a picture. Tiny. Tiny, why did you do it? Oh, no. No, you can't be dead. Hits you pretty hard, doesn't it, Slim? Tiny. 
Tony, I loved you like a brother. Now what's going to happen to me? I'll never get another partner like Tiny. Why? Why did he do it? Oh? You uh, seem to be pretty sure he was a suicide, don't you, Slim? Of course it was. He... What's going on in here? Where's Tiny? Over there on the bed, Miss Darling. On the bed? What's the matter with him? He's dead. Oh, it was a poor, poor man. <laughs> dead? No. No, not Tiny. I'm afraid he is, Miss Darling. Oh. Oh. Quit putting on an act, Peaches. Uh, Miss Darling, please. Please, try and get a hold of yourself. But, but Tiny and I... Oh, rest of help me, will you please? Uh, take Miss Darling to her room. Of course, Dan. Uh, the rest of you had better go to your rooms. And Mrs. Main, lock the door, please, and give the key to the chief. Uh, no, 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 son. Uh, she better give it to you. <laughs> no, I'm not much good in investigating cases. All right, if you wish, chief. Uh, come on, Miss Darling. Rusty? <laughs> no, no, honey, don't cry. I, I, I'm sorry, I can't help it. I tell you, it was nuts, but... He was a good guy. Yes, 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 yes. Help her to a chair, will you, Rusty? There. There you are, Peaches. Well, nobody knew what a good guy he was. Nobody. Dr. Denver, you just got to find the guy who killed him. Oh, then you think he was murdered? Of course he was murdered. Tony didn't want to die. He had everything to live for. I'm afraid, Miss Darling, that everything points to an accident. But how? How? Well, it... Uh... Could have been one of several things. Tiny could have come home intoxicated, for instance. Oh, but he wasn't. I met him after the show. We had one drink with Slim and then came straight to the hotel. Tiny was tired. Went to bed early. Well, there's still the possibility of a leak in the gas fixture. I don't believe it. Well, of course I can settle that with further investigation. Oh, by the way, Miss Darling, just why are you so upset over Tiny's death? If you can't guess, I'm not going to tell you. Well, that's easy, Dan. If you think Tony was murdered, just who do you think did it? That's something I'm not going to tell you either. This is something I'm going to settle in my own way myself. Yeah, you know, I'm not a bit satisfied. This was an accident, Rusty. It looks simple enough to me. What's worrying you? Well, Miss Darling, for one thing, and this light fixture for another. It doesn't sound reasonable for it to spring a leak all of a sudden. Well, gas will leak if there's a hole. Yes, if there's a hole. No, uh, have me a match, Rusty, will you? Here's my lighter. Thanks. Yeah, uh, if there is a leak, it'll burn when I hold the flame around. Gosh, this fixture is up high. I can't even reach it. There. Now, you see, Rusty? No gas leaking out of this thing. Well, that means... That, that means somebody turned it on. Yeah. You better have this valve checked for fingerprints, Rusty. This has to be either suicide or Peaches is right. It's murder. <laughs> Mr. Miles, the meet Dr. Danfield. That big one's for you, Slim. I received a report on the fingerprints, Mrs. Maine. Fingerprints? Yes, on the gas valve in your room, Slim. The only ones on it were yours, Mrs. Maine. Mine? Yes. Now, I want you to think back to last night. When you entered that room, did you turn off the gas? Of course I did. Would you mind passing Mr. Miles the codfish cakes, Doctor? Uh, certainly, yes. Here you are, Slim. Hey. Now, Mrs. Maine. Was the gas lighted when you entered the room? Of course it wasn't. But gas costs money if it's lit or not. I smelled it, so I knew it was on, so I turned it off. And uh, how, may I ask, did you turn it off? You're quite uh, short. Well, I climbed up on a chair. That's how I turned it off. I see. Well, that accounts for Mrs. Maine's fingerprints, Dan. Yes, doesn't it, though? Uh, then what, Mrs. Maine? Well, then I took a look at Mr. Corbett, saw I was dead, and began screaming like any respectable woman would. Would you mind passing Mr. Miles the big beans, Doctor? Yeah, yeah, with pleasure. Uh, here you are, Slim. Thanks. Actors are the hungriest people. Now, Peaches, are you ready to tell me why you were broken up over Tiny's death? I... I love the guy. Oh, I see. Yeah. Him and me was going to get married. Did you know about that, Slim? Ah, she's talking through a hat. That's the first time I heard of him. Oh, Tiny was playing her all right, but... That's all you know about it. You lousy bum. 
what? Miss Darling, please, you shouldn't talk that way about dear Mr. Miles. Dear Mr. Miles, my foot. He's nothing but a hand. Uh, doctor, would you please pass Mr. Miles the brown bread? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, go on, Mrs. Darling. Just to prove that we was going to get married, Tiny and me went out and set down payment on the farm just three days ago. You mean you and Tiny were going to quit show business? Sure we was. You and Tiny was going to tell you to take the old axe and go to a Nantucket in a bucket. Oh, my, what language. Flame, what about you? Yeah, what about me? Well, judging from your condition last night, you'd spent quite a spongy evening. Tell me, did you and Tiny ever have any argument? Oh, sure we did. And what a dozen. We had one yesterday, in fact. Oh, serious? Nah, just the usual stuff. We made up. Him and Peaches and me went in and had a drink together. Tiny was tired, so we come up here to the hotel. Now, some of the boys at the bar said that you were telling them that Tiny, uh, stunk. Nah, they got it all wrong. My Tiny was the greatest comic that ever lived. Uh, doctor. Uh, yes, Miss. Uh, would you mind passing Mr. Miles the apple pie? Yes, yes, of course, Mr. Uh, here you are, sir. Thanks. Uh, Mrs. Maine. Yes, Dr. Danfield. Would you mind passing me the nuts, please? <laughs> In a moment, we'll return for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... And now back to Michael Dunn for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Oh, Danny, what a beautiful day. Yes, yes, mm. isn't it, Rusty? The snow has stopped snoring, the wind has stopped blowing... Mm. Ah. Oh, by the way, did I tell you that Elmhurst was my hometown? You know, I used to live on Elizabeth Street. Do you mean that people are actually born here? That is not very funny, Rusty. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dad. What? My hands are cold. Well, why don't you sit on them? Oh, Dan. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. I was kidding. Here, let me blow on them. What are you coming way out here for? Oh, I thought you'd like a sleigh ride. Oh, I do, but what are we coming way out here for? Well, I can't quite reconcile that statement that Peaches made that she and Tiny were going to be married. Why, again. Oh. Now, if you hold them, they won't get cold again. Sure. Look, no hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, a horse probably knows the way anyway. What's the matter with Peaches and Tiny getting married? Hmm? What's driving way out here got to do with it? Well, despite the fact that Peaches talks kind of rough, she's a very beautiful girl. And uh, strictly Broadway, if you know what I mean. Why would a girl like that want to marry a homely, fat little man like Tiny? Because she loves him. Well, if she does, she's got more character than she's shown us so far. After coming out here, I... Well, I want to check up on that farm story. See if they really did make a down payment. And, uh, incidentally, while we're on that subject, this must be the place. Hmm. Look at it, Dan. A rocky and run down it is. Yes. Hold on, Mr. Dobbin. Hello! Howdy! Howdy, what do you want? Want to talk to you a minute? Say, Dan, it's the policeman. The one who brought in three miles last night. Yes, I see. Uh, what do you want? Oh, <laughs> You, Dr. Danfield. Yes, yes, Chief. I uh, just wanted to ask you a few questions. Yeah, well, go ahead, shoot. Tony, do you uh, own this place? I sure do. Did uh, did Tiny Corbett and Peaches Darling make a down payment on it? I mean, before Tiny died, of course. Oh, uh, yes, Dag, but they did. Now I suppose he'll never sell the place. Or do you suppose he went and committed suicide for He probably came out and looked at the farm when it wasn't snowing. You, uh... You believe it was suicide, do you? Uh, of course you do. Of course you do. Couldn't have been anything else. Okay, Chief, that's all. Oh, uh, if you're in town tonight, you'd better drop by the hotel. I might just happen to be able to close the case. A closed case, huh? Yeah. Well, if it's just the same to you, I'd rather you'd open one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke, sir. <laughs> See you later, Chief. Uh, bye, sir. Get up there, Dobbin. Well, then, you... Didn't learn much there. Oh, but I did, Rusty. Yes? What? You were right. She really loved the guy. Hmm. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, <laughs> jingle all the way. Oh, oh what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. <laughs> Here, 
come on, Rusty. I want to take one more look at Tiny's room. Oh, right, but I... Uh, close it. the door, will you, Rusty, please? Sure. Dan, what are you going to find? Hey. Take a look at this confection. The gas jet? Yeah. Look. Turn it off, Dan. I'm choking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it's off. <clears throat> That's a little rusty. He needs tightening. Oh. Oh, what does that prove? <laughs> Uh, notice the handle on this valve. One of those one-sided kind. It sticks straight up when it's closed. Well, so <laughs> what? <clears throat> so I think we'd better have another little talk with Mrs. Maine. Well, wow. here's the good lady in person. Well, what are you two doing in here? Having no respect for the dead? Enough to want to avenge his murder. Murder? Oh! Mrs. Maine, just where did you find that telegram that came for Tiny and Slim? I didn't find it. It was delivered. When? Around supper time. And, uh, did you keep it in your possession until you gave it to Slim? Of course not. Put it on the hall table where I always put telegrams. Tell me, do you know who, uh, someone else saw it but you? Well, how do I know? They could have. It was laying there long enough. I see. Now, once more, exactly what did you do when you entered the boy's room? I already told you. I kicked his clothes out of the way, grabbed a chair from in front of the dresser. His clothes? What clothes? His clothes. Mr. Corbett. It was in the middle of the floor, at least his coat was. I had to kick it out of the way so as it could get the chair under the gas jet. I see. That's all, Mrs. Maine. Oh, will you please notify all your other guests to meet me here after supper? Now it's time poor Tiny had a good old-fashioned wake. <laughs> I think so. Let's see. Slim, Mrs. Miles, Peaches, and... Oh, yes, the chief. Well, glad you could come, chief. By the way, is there anything you'd uh, like to say? No, don't go ahead, son. It's your party. Well, thanks. I don't see why you had to drag everybody Quiet, down. Quiet, Peaches. Dan knows what he's doing. Now, uh, as we all know, Tiny was killed, asphyxiated by gas escaping from the gas jet. Sure, we know. A leak. But it wasn't a leak, Slim. Somebody turned the gas on. Poor man. He must have come home and turned on the gas and forgot to light sure, it. Sure, that was it. Must have been. Tiny was drunk. He'd had... Didn't you say he had just one drink, Slim? Well, uh, yeah. But him and Peaches probably stopped in somewhere else and had some more. That could be. But uh, how do you account for the fact that Tiny's coat was lying directly under the gas jet when Mrs. Main came in? What? His coat? Tiny? Yes. She had to kick it out of the way in order to get a chair to turn off the gas. I don't know. I... Well, let me give you my idea. Let's suppose Tiny did have a few more drinks. He comes in pie-eyed, takes off his coat, and hangs it up on the gas jet. Yeah. The gas jet is loose. The weight of the coat gradually turns it on. Now, as the handle on the valve comes down under the weight of the coat, the coat slips off and falls to the floor. Tiny is asleep. The room fills with gas. Tiny dies. Oh, the poor, poor man. Oh, then, Danny, you say it was an accident. Oh, Rusty, it was murder. But, sure. but you said... I said it was murder, Slim. Tiny couldn't possibly have hung his coat on that jet. Why? Why couldn't he? Tiny wasn't tall enough, Slim. To do a trick like that would take a man as tall as... Well, let's say a man as tall as you. In a moment, we'll return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... Now back to Michael Dunn for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Oh, am I glad to get away from that town, even if you were born there. No more rundown hotels or gas lights for me. Say, Rusty, look out the window. Isn't New England beautiful? Hmm. So white and clean under a new blanket of snow. Get him waxing poetical again. Ah, it's lovely, Rusty, lovely. Then, how did you ever guess it was murder instead of an accident? Hmm? Oh, oh, one little mistake. A murderer always makes at least one, you know. What was that? The lack of other fingerprints on the gas jet. Slim had wiped them off. But how was that proven? Well, he and Tony had used that room for about a week, so his fingerprints would have to be there under Mrs. Maine. I see. Hmm. But how did you ever figure out it was Slim? Well, if you had listened to my lecture, Rusty, you wouldn't have to ask. Well, what has your lecture got to do with it? I said there was a psychological reason behind every crime, and once we had that reason, we had the motive. Well, I know, but... But what was the motive in this case? Frustrated ambition, jealousy, and hate. <laughs> like any good Greek, you will always have a word for it. <laughs> you see, Rusty, 
Flynn saw the telegram lying on the hall table and read it. He knew about the offer to make pictures in Hollywood, but Tiny was sick and tired of Flynn's bullying. He had already made up his mind to buy a farm, quit show business, marry peaches, and settle down. Now, Slim was jealous of Tiny. He secretly knew that Tiny was the best part of the act. He knew that Hollywood wouldn't buy the act without Tiny. So his ambitions to become a movie star were thwarted and frustrated. Well, how about the hate part of it? Well, wouldn't you hate a guy who did that to you? Hate him enough to kill? Hmm. Yes, I would. And, of course, after figuring out the motive, the rest was just ordinary police routine. I see. Uh, Ben. Yes, Rusty? What's a scale? <laughs> a scale, my dear Rusty, is what a poet starts with when he wants to write a song. A system of <laughs> notes. No. Which, when properly welded together and combined with beautiful words <laughs> and sung with, uh, say, a voice such as mine, oh, makes no. the beautiful ladies fall right into our lap. <laughs> oh, oh, Dan. <laughs> You know, I was afraid you were going to say it was a freckle on a fish. <laughs> <laughs>